The Chargers had a huge need at linebacker after losing their 2023 starters, and they are filling it with a familiar face, bringing back former second-round pick Denzel Perryman. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Lockdown Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogenmeyer. And we've been covering the Chargers together for eight seasons now, but this is our sixth year as a host of the Lockdown Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you to the everydayers out there for making us your first listen today. And to make sure that you never miss the show, go subscribe or follow for free on the Lockdown Chargers YouTube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from. David, what do we got today? Well, Daniel, the Chargers hit on another targeted strike where they added a linebacker that is a very familiar face. Of course, that is their former second round pick from 2015, Denzel Perriman into the fold. And then it is Mock Draft Monday. And, and today we are going to do this as if the Chargers were trading back with the Vikings, picking up pick 11 and 23, which opens up the possibility to bring in Jackson Powers Johnson at center. Yeah. I mean, that's a dream that we thought might die after the hype train kind of got out of control, and he's now for sure a first-round pick. It feels like but yeah, having that dream alive is great. Brian Thomas Jr., if the Chargers trade back, getting that kind of clear-cut next option after the top three guys, I think is a, a, you know, a pretty good option for them, especially if you're trying to get a field-stretching type of player. But today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDON for $20 off your first purchase. David, we heard from many different reporters, but Jeremy Fowler said that the Chargers and Denzel Perriman have now agreed to a contract for $3 million for one season. He puts back where it all started, and this makes me smile in a way. I mean, obviously, Denzel Perriman is, you know, was a fan favorite before, and a big thing with him with the Chargers was just not being able to stay on the field because when he was out there, he was a very good player, and it sucked to see him play for the Raiders. It was nice to see him get some, you know, run with the Houston Texans with their success last year. But now he's back with the Chargers, and I think that, you know, that seeing that familiar face was a fun thing to see over the weekend. That's right. I love seeing Denzel Perriman back in the lightning bolts. Uh, it just feels right. Uh, and definitely, it's a position of need. The, the Chargers absolutely needed to add some veteran presence to their linebacker room. It was definitely pretty thin. And yeah. also what they do by getting rid of Kendricks and adding Denzel Perriman is they cut their allocation of money from $6 million a season down to $3 million a season. So yeah. they get some you know, pretty similar production. They're different players for sure. Both very, very good against the run. But it's really nice to see Denzel Perriman back in the fold. Yeah, and I think especially when you're losing your two starters from 2023, because it's not just Eric Kendricks, right? But it's also Kenneth Murray moving on to the Titans as well. Yeah. You had a super young group, right? Like you needed kind of a veteran in that room. And I think when you see the prices of some of these other linebacker deals, Kenneth Murray's included, you know, nine or almost up to $9 million per season for Kenneth Murray, right? Like I think Crazy. that tells you what the linebacker market was. So to kind of make this, under the radar kind of signing a little later on in free agency, I think fills a big need. And I think when you're looking at how he fits with the Chargers, I think he's a nice fit with someone like a day on Henley, right? I think they complement each other well. And I think it, if you're looking at, you know, what he brings to the table still, even at the age of 31, right? Because, I mean, you're basically signing him at the same age you signed Eric Kendricks last year, right? Yeah. You're still getting a, a dominant run defender, someone that you know can still bring that to your defense. And I think especially when you have two guys in Dayon Henley and Nick Neiman is really the only guys in that room right now. It's nice to know, okay, you have this dude who still can hit like a Mack truck. That's right. Denzel Perriman is Denzel Perriman. That is who you bring into the table. It's very clear what he offers. He's pretty much a two-down linebacker in the NFL, a phenomenal run defender, and a liability in coverage. He's a guy that you don't really want to be on the field on third downs. Deion Henley's probably the, the, the player you want to be on the field in those type of situations. He has a little bit more range, a little bit more speed, but make no mistake, 
Denzel Perriman can still run right through you. He is yeah. uh, still very much a Tasmanian devil in the running game. He will wreck shop. I mean, it doesn't matter. You look at his size. He runs through offensive linemen. He enjoys the contact. But that's also why Denzel Perriman only plays about 12 to 13 games a season because of the physical yep. brand of football that he plays. So you got to just know what you're getting. You're getting a two-down linebacker. You're getting a guy who can definitely hit in, in the running game. But you also got to understand that he's probably going to deal with some injuries at some point in the season. Yeah. I, I mean, I think with him, as far as like the run defense goes, I mean, he was 16th in run stop percentage last year, which is pretty good considering there's, you know, 64 starting linebackers in the NFL. And also he was second in average depth of tackle, which I think shows you the instincts to read and fill the hole and also the stopping power because guys oh, yeah. aren't usually falling forward when they're hit by Denzel <laughs> Perriman. It's the same now. As it was then. I guess if you're looking at the downside, one part of it would just be that as of right now, before the rest of the signings happen, it cancels out a sixth round compensatory pick for the Chargers. But like you have all this space, it's going to be very hard to keep bringing in dudes that aren't going to cancel out some of your compensatory picks when you have the holes that the Chargers have right now. And you're trying to yeah. shore some of those things up. There's only so many guys that were released from other teams that aren't going to count against that formula or just cheap enough to not count against that formula. I think they'll continue to try to attack that later. But as far as the coverage goes, yeah, I mean, in one game last year against Cincinnati, he gave up over 120 receiving yards just in one game playing linebacker, which isn't great. Yeah. I also think that the missed tackle rate is a little concerning. 14.7% last year, 13.8 in 2022. Was much better the two years prior to that. But he's always kind of have had shorter arms too and, you know, yeah. goes for big hits a lot. So as a maybe rotational type of guy, you know, a guy to bring leadership, a guy that you kind of know exactly what you're getting and can kind of play around what his flaws are. I really like the signing, especially for yeah. the price. And I think when you're looking at what they have now, David, when you're bringing in someone like Denzel Perriman, you know what you're getting from him, but with the other unknowns that you still have in that room, I don't think it precludes you from taking another linebacker at some point. Absolutely not. Yeah, I think that that's still a position that needs to be ad addressed for the future because a hey, Nick Neiman is in year year four, you know, yeah. so he's going into a contract year. Obviously, Dayon Henley, this is his sophomore season, so he's on a contra contract for a few more years. But Denzel Perriman's a one year stopgap. I mean, let, let's let's not get it twisted yeah, it here. Is. So, like that's that's what this is. So the Chargers definitely should still be looking at addressing a linebacker if they get the right one that they like with the, the value at the pick. Um, it is a position that still needs to be addressed. But I like what they did here. I, I like the, them adding a veteran to the room. I think it was important. It just goes along with a, a very strategically uh, set up off season so far. You know, they've just been plugging holes left, right, and center with the moves that they've been making. Uh, and I like it. I, I like what they've done. I feel like they've got pieces that are, are going to be able to contribute. And I feel the same uh, about Denzel Perriman. But I would very much like them to grab uh, a linebacker probably somewhere in the middle rounds of the draft. Someone that they can uh, bring in, someone who they can develop and get on the football field when whenever they're ready. Yeah, and I think a big part of this move, and one of the reasons the Chargers pulled the trigger on this is just because it's not supposed to be a great draft for linebackers. So you're getting someone... So you're not pigeonholing yourself. And I think you get kind of a nice mix with the guys that you have right now, assuming Dayon Henley and Nick Neiman can play, right? Because that's yeah. the thing we don't know at this point. Like Nick Neiman, pretty good athlete. Dayon Henley, a very good athlete. Both of those dudes have very, very limited snaps. And, yeah. and that's saying, you know, that's really un kind of like that's underselling it a little bit yeah 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 it's underselling it for Dayon Henley with Nick Neiman oh, yeah. it's like okay hey yeah almost 300 snaps defensively you've seen something there but it's still an incredibly small sample size yeah. for three seasons yeah with yeah. Dayon Henley it's nothing. mostly a special teams guy right yeah, yeah and played. that's what Nick Neiman is and that's kind of his floor which is great but you just don't know what to expect like Dayon Henley did not get on the field last year and that's just yeah, was not what enough. it was yeah yeah you saw him in the preseason and then you know half a half year a couple of series there, and that's about it. So you just don't really know. You also don't know how this coaching staff feels about how what they have in that room right now. So yeah. it'll be very interesting to see how they kind of continue to address this group. But I do think that this is a great step in the right direction because we know exactly what you know Denzel Perryman is. Like we don't. There's no illusions here. We yeah. know he's a limited player, yeah. but the things he does well, he does really well. And one of the things we wanted to do today, especially since it is Monday, is do a little bit of a mock draft. And we know the Vikings just got some extra juice in the draft. It looks like they're going to be trying to move up. Could they trade picks 23 and 11 to the Chargers for pick five? If they do that, 
what could it look like? We're going to mock draft that today, getting into a very fast receiver in Brian Thomas Jr. and someone we're both very excited to talk about in Jackson Powers Johnson, the center from Oregon. All that and more on today's Locked On Chargers podcast. First, though, I need to tell you guys about Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood is the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on that 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker-dealer. All right, David, well, let's get into a little mock draft Monday. Assuming a very specific situation happens, right? Because we know the teams that need quarterbacks, and it's probably going to be the first three teams at least that need a quarterback, but we know the Cardinals don't, right? But where that puts the Chargers at is that the Cardinals, which is still the prohibitive favorite at this point to take Marvin Harrison Jr. at four, because especially when they're trading away Rondell Moore and kind of just really, really need a receiver, That puts the Chargers in an interesting spot right in front of the Giants, who have Daniel Jones, who's not good, to potentially take someone like J.J. McCarthy, putting the Chargers right in the spot that is a prime trade-up position for someone that might want that fourth quarterback, because it does seem like there's four, and there's a big gap between them and the rest of the quarterbacks in this class. One of the things that makes the most sense is the Chargers potentially trading back to 11 with the Vikings. And what did the Vikings do recently? Traded a few picks to the Texans to get a second first-round pick in the upcoming draft class, really putting them in position to make a move up, which is exciting, right? Because the Chargers, in most scenarios, you know, there's so many positives to trading back. So today we kind of wanted to do a mock draft where we look at, you know, what could be available, how it could play out if the Chargers get picks 11 and 23, and they might even get more than that, right? But today we're focusing on the first round and what it could look like if the Chargers had two picks, which is pretty nice. And the receiver, really the only receiver that would make sense to take there, assuming that, Brock Bowers is gone because we would take him. Assuming that Roma Dunze is gone because we would take him too. Mm -hmm. If those guys are gone and the Chargers are sitting at 11 and want to go receiver, the only guy that makes sense is Brian Thomas Jr. And I think that if you're looking at, okay, why would it make a lot of sense for the Chargers, the fastest player that Justin Herbert's ever played with, getting him a legitimate deep threat. And I understand, I mean, I, I like to think to myself like, What would his season have looked like if Malik Neighbors didn't exist, right? Because he still put up a ridiculous season. But he is a guy, David, I think that would make the most sense there if those other guys were gone and the Chargers wanted to take a receiver and felt like they needed to with Keenan Allen gone now. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a position that the Chargers have to address. I mean, they're number one and number two wide receivers are gone now. So Suppose Keenan Allen were over living in now. Which is a world I never wanted to live in, at least not this early, that's for sure. But... The, the, the show must go on, unfortunately, and the show has to go on for the Chargers. So looking at this, Brian Thomas Jr. could fit for sure because, hey, they got a quarterback that can throw the ball a country mile. And they, this is a receiver that's six foot three, uh, 209 pounds that runs a four three, which is yeah. absolutely ridiculous. And uh, as of, you know, up to this point and like this year, the type of kind of prototype receiver that the Chargers liked to to bring into the fold so yeah at least uh, tall enough yeah yeah definitely tall enough tall enough and fast enough at least joe ortiz said he wants to bring in a lot of speed he might have been too he might have been too fast for tom telesco let's be honest let's let's not get carried away he's tall enough but i don't know if yeah he might have been too fast yeah 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 he's not a four or five guy he's an absolute four three guy and, and it shows up on the tape but you can it's easy to see why you could pair a brian thomas jr with a justin herbert yeah i mean it's what you always wanted right like a a receiver fast enough to be able to fully take advantage of Justin Herbert's big arm. And I think when you're looking at what this offense is going to be, someone that would fit really good in a play action offense where you're going hard play action, you give this time dude time to get down the field. And like, there's just no one that can stay with him. Like, and that's what showed up all over his tape. I mean, he is a legitimate bona fide full blown deep threat that also has other good parts of his game, but that's what the draw is, right? I mean, oh, yeah. you're looking at it 15 deep catches last year. That's more than one per game. That's third in the NCAA 670 yards, 
just on deep balls, right? That's only balls that are going Second 20 most plus in the country. yards down the field. So it's not like he was, you know, catching in and then getting it. It's like targeted down the field, throw it as far as you can. This guy's going to find a way to catch up to it. Also really good at tracking the ball over his shoulder. Yeah. 4 3 3 40 time, right? A 9 8 2 RES score, full-blown all-around athlete. Like, there's a lot to like with this game. And a huge, huge season in 2023, man. I mean, unbelievable. He uh, he went crazy. 13 games, uh, 1,177 yards, 17 touchdowns for Brian Thomas Jr. Yeah, that's a big number. That, number one that, in the that, country. Yeah. yeah, that's a massive number here. He makes defensive backs take really bad angles. Like against Florida, he got the corner out of position and got behind him and scored a 37-yard touchdown. Uh, he does a really excellent job, like you said, of tracking the ball, the deep ball. Very good over his shoulder as well. He has breakaway speed, caught a pass in between two defenders, forced a missed tackle, and then took off to the end zone. He's yeah. a, he's more of a straight line speed guy, but he's a runway uh, guy. We talk about that. Yeah, There's he's a runway, runway guy for and sure. Creators, right? And I yeah. put him more in the runway guy. No category. question about it. He doesn't shy away from blocking, and he does a good job with it. Um, and he does a very good job of getting open. Per PFF in 2023, Thomas was charted as open on 74 of his 87 targets. He also led college football with 17 receiving touchdowns. So this is a absolute true deep threat in every sense of the word. Yeah. A very, very dangerous, dangerous receiver. is. If you let him get behind you, it's over. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, he can make people take bad angles like you talked about. He can gain the corner, and if he does, he's probably gone. Oh, yeah. He pulls away <laughs> from defensive backs in the deep part of the field like nobody's business. Like, you can be fast, but there's something to just being able to, <laughs> you know, keep guys off of you and being able to create that separation at the third level that, you know, even some guys who run four or fives can do it. it there's a there's a skill to it, and he yeah. definitely has that skill. It's not just the speed. He's just a good deep ball receiver and I think would fit well with what the Chargers are going to do now and I think that when you look at him and what the downside of it is right I I, I think he is a very I think he's a pretty good route runner for his size right because he's yeah. a 6'3 dude Keenan Allen's the only dude that's 6'3 and moves the way Keenan Allen does right so it's like you're kind of grading on a curve a little bit there but I think the hard thing is he was just mostly used in a certain way at LSU that you didn't really get to see the full route tree right. as much, right? And to your point about being that runway guy, he's not a huge creator after the catch. I've seen some people tout him, and maybe there's different games that I haven't watched. He's a lot better. But he was a, he only had 11 missed tackles forced last year, which is 104th in college football. So he's not at the top end. He's not an elite creator after the catch. But he can definitely break your angles just because he's so fast that he can get the corner and be gone. Sometimes a body catcher, but only five drops in 2023. So like there's, I, this might be a little bit of a reach for me at 11. Like it, it would feel kind of a little bit forced. There might be better options you could go with there. Obviously we're doing it under the ramifications of, Hey, those other guys are all gone. Brock yeah. Bowers is gone. And we wanted to go with the receiver because it is a post Keenan Allen world that we're living in. Yeah. So there is some downside to it, but there's a lot to like as well. Yeah, no question. I mean, uh, uh, some focus drops, like like you mentioned, uh, you know, uh, five drops last season. Not a lot of lateral quickness. This is not a shake and bake type of guy. Like you, like you said, he's a runway type of receiver, and yeah. he could probably uh, stand to be a little bit more physical against press. I mean, he is a big guy. He needs to use that body uh, a little bit more effectively, trying trying to get defenders off of him. Because, like I said, once he gets those legs stretched out and he's yeah. able able to get going. There's no way that you're going to stop him. So he's definitely a very dangerous receiver. It's easy to see how you could fit in this uh, in a play action type of offense, especially if the Chargers have a much better, uh, more reliable running game to yeah. where they can send this guy deep to where you really have to worry about defending the run in the pass. This is a guy that could be very, very dangerous. Yeah, and the thing is with guys like this, it's multifaceted, right? Because it's not just the deep balls he catches. It's just the fact that you have to respect it and how oh, yeah. that kind of changes the coverage and how that makes life easier for the other receivers around you, right? Because nobody respected it last year, Daniel. Nobody against the Chargers yeah. respected them going yeah, deep yeah. at all. Yeah, exactly. No, they, they dared them to, right? Yeah. That's basically what it was, and the Chargers didn't have anyone that could really make them pay for it, especially when you didn't have someone like Mike Williams you could just throw it up to, even though he didn't have to actually create the separation needed, right? I think uh, as far as you know, the blocking goes, like the dude can block. But he was timid way too often and just didn't care enough way too often for my liking. Like, you, he has the ability. It's much more of an effort thing for me there. I think another thing, too, especially with, you know, kind of a thing I think went wrong with the Quentin Johnson evaluation, too. Something that obviously we talked about before he was drafted, but just like 
having a guy that size, he's not Mike Williams, right? He's not right. the contested catch guy no. that Mike Williams is. Uh, you know, he caught at 53.8% in contested catches, according to Pro Football Focus. He has his moments. I mean, he scored 17 touchdowns. He was a, a monster red zone threat as well as a deep threat, too. But, like, he's not that guy where he's a dominant, you know, 80-20. Yeah, you're not going to throw a fade up to this guy. No, they yeah. they didn't, and you really wouldn't. I mean, at least, like, goal line fades, yeah. right? Because, obviously, slot fades and things like that right. he was doing a bunch of. But only one season of elite production, too, right? Blew up in his last season. Never really had a season close to that before that. So, if you're looking for cons, that's where you would look at. But I think... You know, it, it, maybe it's not 11. Maybe it's they trade to a different pick or something like that. There's probably going to be someone else I would go with. But, like, if they ended up with the two guys we're going to talk about today in the first round, it's like, okay, well, that feels like they're taking care of, you know, two of the biggest needs that they have because they have their center of the future as well, Jackson Powers Johnson. Because with this trade, it makes the Jackson Powers Johnson dream alive. And we're going to have a really, really hard time coming up with cons for him, David, because that dude is a monster and he's making it to the Chargers in this mock draft. And we're getting to that and more on today's Locked On Chargers podcast. First, though, I do need to tell you guys about Game Time because Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you're going to have. Game Time is the place for last minute tickets. And with Game Time, you always know you're getting the best deal. You don't have to stress about that because the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section in a row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference and they give you all the prices up front so you don't have to see a great price and be like, oh, great. And then you get there, you get to the checkout and now you're paying 30% more or something like that. That is my least favorite thing. Like that turns me off so quickly to whatever I'm using If I before I got game time, obviously. Because with game time, you just don't worry about it. The price you see is the price you get. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Lockdown NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. But again, create an account, redeem code L O C K E D O N N F L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. David, well, I know you're excited for this part because we're getting into pick twenty three. Obviously, with pick eleven is Brian Thomas Jr. Now we're getting the second of our first round picks because the Chargers traded with the Vikings and picked up two first rounders, which with the Chargers holes, you could do a lot worse than that, right? And, and maybe they would even get more because the QB A lot of tax, work to do. The QB tax is steep. If, you, if yeah. teams know you want a quarterback, the price just went up. And obviously, if the Vikings go up, they're trying to get that quarterback for Justin Jefferson and them boys over there. But I do want to tell everyone to make sure you're checking out Locked On Sports today, the first ever national 24-7 sports streaming channel that you can now find on the Amazon Fire TV as well on their free TV channels. It is the only thing like it of its kind because you're getting 24-7 wall-to-wall coverage of all of the sports with local insiders giving you the local insight of covering those teams every day, which only Locked On can provide. But... Let's get to this mock draft, David, because we get picked 23. If the Chargers are going to pick around there and there's any chance that Jackson Powers Johnson is there, it was the only way we're going to go today because with this, the Chargers get their center of the future. You don't really need to say much more than that. Corey Lindsley goes, Jackson Powers Johnson goes, you know, fills in for that. You don't skip a beat. Plug and play, baby. Jackson Powers Johnson is an absolute monster. I mean, uh, the hype is real, guys. I mean, after watching the tape on Jackson Powers Johnson, this guy is pretty close to a perf perfect prospect, in in my opinion, when he's coming in from you know the center position, yeah. uh, especially when it's a, a position of very high value and very high need for the Chargers. If the Chargers are able to to get him, he's on the board. I'm sprinting up to the podium to call <laughs> his name. I'm extremely excited about this pairing. Yeah, I mean... If, if there's a good chance he doesn't even make it to 23, right? I mean, the only reason he would make it to 23 is because he's a center, and, and that's not a position you usually draft in the top 20 of a draft in the first round. You just don't. He's the kind of dude that's the exception to the rule because, like, it feels like he has, you know, not just future Charger center, but, like, it feels like he has, like, top five center in the league potential, and it doesn't feel crazy to say that, and I don't usually say that about prospects going in. I mean, when's the last time you heard me say, hey, this guy's a top five receiver at some point in the league? I don't say that often. It's just hard not to think it when you watch Jackson Powers Johnson. And, like, even Zach Frazier was good, right? Like, we really, really like Zach Frazier. Graham Barton's another yeah. guy that teams are going to take in the first round potentially. This is a really good center class, and this is the best one. 
right? Like you're getting a guy that you don't have to worry about again. And also a guy that fits what Greg Roman wants to do. He is as physical as it gets. He is probably scheme proof. But if you had to say which one he'd be better in, it feels like it's one where you let him get downhill. You let him get his hands on people and do what you set out in this offseason to do, right? You wanted to boost your running game. Jackson Powers Johnson does that, David, because there's just so many things that he does well. Yeah, I mean, constantly climbing to the second level with high level blocks. I mean, yeah. it's it's like it's it's really special to see him be able to move in space and be able to grab latch on to a defender and physically move him out of the way against his will uh, and with overwhelming force and power because that's what happens. He is yeah. a and I mean, I can't understate this or under, undersell this enough. He is a spectacular pass protector. Okay. Listen to this zero sacks and three pressures. And I mean, three solo pressures allowed in 32 games that spans over three seasons, yeah. 758 pass blocking snaps, three pressures allowed that is unbelievable yeah. um it's un, it's just crazy to see and and it's it's true i mean you watch the tape no one gets anywhere close to the quarterback up the middle he handles everything his head is on the swivel he's always looking for someone to block and and pass protection uh you need a first down run behind jackson powers johnson because he is a guy that is going to clear out the way uh, even when he overruns a defender he's smart enough to know to get in, in that defender's way to allow the ball carrier to continue moving down the field tremendous power in his hands i mean the punch is unbelievable it's just crazy yeah. sometimes he just uses one hand and the the knockback that he has is is unreal i mean this guy uh, whether it's pass protection whether it, it's run blocking he does everything at an extremely high level and if you watch him you know why he's such an exciting prospect first team all-american remington trophy winner for the best center in the country it's crazy and one of the my favorite pros that i had for him um was when i was looking up his background played 31 snaps at nose tackle in his fred true freshman year at oregon right and you have to be a kind of a weirdo <laughs> to be, and crazy person to play defensive line he carries that mentality to the offensive side like loves to finish the play i actually laughed out loud watching him like block someone out of the the screen right just like he's out of the, out of the frame he's out of the frame <laughs> and, and like it happened like for a few times and i'm like the dude's playing center it's not yeah. a tackle where you're on the edge and you're kind of close to the edge of the screen he's literally playing it's called center for a reason he's right in the middle of the play and guys are leaving the screen like it, it is crazy another crazy thing about him just turned 21 like this dude isn't even probably physically fully mature yet like he he could even get better, which is crazy to think you about. Called him the it, Quentin Nelson of centers. I did say that. I did say that when we were messaging. It felt like that when I was yeah. watching it, right? And it's been a little while, obviously, since I watched Quentin Nelson. But that's just how I felt, like just with yeah. the, the type of play, like it the feels dominance, like just the dominance. Yeah, and like he's also athletic enough. You know, he can pull, he can move. the The rate and the clip that he hits guys at the second level at is is really really good. I and mean, we've watched a lot of guys this year and handle stunts at a high level. His anchor is insane. He, he blocks until the play is over and then an extra half a second just because, like, plays with the perfect temperament that you want. Like, the only downside about the way that we even went with this, David, like, I mean, we talked about it before. Like, the cons are so hard to come up with. Like, a little bit shorter arms yeah. does, you know, overrun some blocks sometimes as he's scraping down the line of scrimmage. You know, guys can kind of undercut him and get behind him. But, like, it, it, there's nothing there. Like, the only real con you can kind of take away with this and just the kind of the way this went, because um, I would be fully on board, pick 23. 11, you know, with Brian Thomas Jr., if they went a different direction, I'd understand it. Jackson Powers Johnson's there at 23, and they still don't have a center. I would lose it if they didn't take him, because I think oh, you could easily argue goodness. he's the best player there. It's just taking back-to-back -back players in the first round on offense, right? Obviously, the Chargers have just as many needs on defense as they do offensively, and taking back-to-back -back players on offense might not seem like the best, but the nice thing is, is obviously it's an extra pick. So I think you could still address the defense. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, like, like you mentioned, when we were talking is like, they still have four picks in the top 110 to still yeah. be able to address after those two picks. Yeah. yeah. After those two picks to still be able to address things on the defensive side. I, I'm still all for loading up for Justin Herbert, get him the protection mm -hmm. he needs, get him the weapons that he needs so that the chargers can go out there and really be a, a threat on the offensive side and really showcase the best version of Justin Herbert. Cause we haven't seen that yet. Yeah, and I think, you know, if you can fill two of your biggest needs on offense in the first round and feel like you're Check. getting instant contributors because, you you know, say what you will about either of these guys' games. Both of them for this Chargers team would contribute 
from the onset and, and would be starters for them immediately. And I think if you get two first round picks, the thing you want the most, I need two above average starters at yeah. the very least coming out of that. Got to make we need count. these guys to play this year, play well, keep us competitive in a world, you know, where the Chargers had to make some tough decisions offensively. So, you know, when you lose your two top receivers and you have to medically retire your all pro center, it's going to need some work. And in this scenario with this mock, you're filling two of those big needs. And then you'd probably even double dip later on a receiver if you wanted to as oh, well. Yeah. So I, I like the way this would go. If it went this way, I'd be okay with it, especially with the Jackson Powers Johnson part of this. We also talked about potentially going, you know, Quinion Mitchell uh, at 11 because we've already talked about Terry on Arnold and you know how much we like him. If they want to go Quinion there, right, and maybe uh, A.D. Mitchell, a receiver in the 20s, maybe that's an option they could go with too. But it would be a lot of fun if it ended up going this direction. But that is going to do it for today's show. We'll be back with you guys tomorrow with some buy or sell and any of the latest move because you know moves because it is your team every day. And I believe we're going to be seeing some more signings here as the later stages of free agency get here. So you know we'll always be here for you the next day with the latest news or even a live show that night. And to make sure you don't miss it, go subscribe or follow for free to Locked on Charges YouTube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from as well as following all of our social media because we post the show there every day. You can hit us up on Twitter at Lockdown LAC, me at Dan Talk Sports and David Drogmeyer at Drotalk SC. You can also find us on Instagram at Lockdown Chargers and our Lockdown Chargers Facebook page. But thank you guys so much for checking out this Mock Draft Monday, especially with the reunion of the Chargers and Denzel Perryman. Excited about that, but make sure you guys are back here with us tomorrow. But until then, take it easy and go Bolts.